Shruti, who is going to be a speaker for today's session. And I am also very much happy and privileged to introduce the speaker of this session, Dr. Maria Monica Enclescu, who is a senior researcher, Group of Functional Nanostructure, National Institute of Materials, Physics, Romania. Welcome, ma'am. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Thank yes, you very much thank, for thank you, your thank you. kind introduction. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm I'm made to introduce you. I want I am having some more points here. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Monica is a senior scientific researcher one within the laboratories of multifunctional materials structures uh, in National Institute of Material Physics, Romania, and she has a MSc degree in semiconductor physics and a PhD in optics and spectroscopy at 2002 at the physics uh, Faculty of Physics, University of Bucharest. And she also received a DAAD fellowship from GSI Ramstedt, Germany in 2002 and an Excellency Prize awarded by Romanian Ministry of Education and Research in 2007. And also she was awarded by the Romanian Academy for the award for physics in 2009. And she also has a postdoctorate uh, in uh, GSI Darmstadt uh, in Germany in 2003. And now she is a principal investigator and team leader of 11 research grants and projects related to the synthesis and characterization of nanostructures and participated in many other national and international projects. So her research interest involves <laughs> in fabrication, characterization, and application of nanostructures with interesting optical and morphological properties. She is also co-authored with 10 national patent requests, three book chapters, and over 160 papers in ISI index journal and H index of 18. So I'm very happy and I welcome you for the uh, takeover of the session. And now I hand over the session to you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present uh, our work in this session and for uh, a very nice introduction. Thank you. Um, I will share my uh, presentation now. Uh, okay. I think. I don't know if everybody is seeing the. Okay. Can you see my? Yeah. Yes, bro. You can uh, max. Uh, you can put it in a slideshow. Okay. It is visible. Your slide is visible. You put it as a slideshow. Yeah, that's fine. You can proceed. Okay. okay. So I'm uh, from uh, National Institute of Material Physics, as uh, the uh, chairman chairwoman said, uh, which is in uh, the European country of Romania. And our institute is near uh, the capital of uh, Romania, Bucharest, uh, in Magurele, which is a platform of physics, the biggest in the country. And uh, I would like to present first uh, our institute, if uh, I may. Uh, we have a history of 65 years of uh, producing and um, characterizing uh, nanomaterials and materials, new, advanced in general. Um, we have um, uh, m produced uh, fabricated materials uh, like uh, thin films or um, uh, bulks for uh, either gas sensing or electronic materials. Uh, and um, also uh, newer interests are in biosensing and so. We use physical preparation methods such as pulse, laser deposition, or also chemical methods, classical, sol gel uh, preparation, or 
even more advanced and more complex uh, method like um, chemical vapor uh, deposition uh, to produce uh, structures like um, nanostructure or thin films or uh, other materials that are further used in applications. Uh, we search for uh, functionality of uh, those materials and um, are prepared by many physical and chemical um, uh, fabrication uh, methods. And uh, diverse application, as I said, like biosensing are uh, searched for, or um, um, gas sensing, memories, transistors, um, that uh, can be used in application uh, are fabricated in our institute. Uh, we also have an interest in uh, producing uh, solar cells. Uh, lately, we have reached efficiency of above 15%. Uh, they are very interesting uh, using perovskites uh, or dye doped material, but not only those materials. And uh, <clears throat> nanostructures are one key element uh, in our scientific activity. They can be implemented further in um, other application. And we have advanced method of characterization uh, from uh, optical uh, spectroscopy to electron microscopy or a mechanical uh, a type of characterization, <clears throat> sorry, or a more advanced and complex like XPS, uh, X ray photo electron spectroscopy. Uh, we have uh, a very low um, uh, average uh, age for our researchers, and uh, we aim subjects that are at the frontier of the knowledge. Uh, we have num a number. Uh, large number of collaboration. You can see here uh, the microscopy with the transmission electron microscopy that uh, looks at the uh, planes of atoms in our materials. Uh, so my presentation today, it's about functional nanostructures that uh, are obtained by uh, the electrospinning technique. Um, First, I would like to talk about uh, the electrospinning process, tell you a little bit about how our structures are done. Then um, to present uh, a various type of applications that uh, um, are you obtained for the fibers that we produce. Then uh, I will uh, talk uh, about uh, the optical properties of uh, our dye doped nanofibers uh, with uh, um, underlining the white light emitting type of nanostructures that we produce. And um, in the end, I will talk about the photocatalytic properties of nanotubes that are produced by uh, this fabrication uh, method. So um, the electrospin, it's a very cheap, very versatile, uh, very, um, let's say, uh, usable and uh, flexible type of uh, technique to produce nanostructures, mainly polymer nanofibers we are talking and further uh, other structures for application. And um, the main interests are in the um, biomedical type of domains like tissue engineering scaffolds, or wound dressing or a medical prosthesis of drug deliveries as well or hemostatic devices. But there are other uses for this type of polymer fibers like uh, for filters, for cosmetics. Uh, also those type of fibers and their meshes that are formed can be used for protective and uh, self-cleaning uh, coatings. Uh, they can be also used for sensing devices uh, for, um, well, after um, putting some metallic uh, covering, uh, we can use them as electrical conductors. 
they can be used as photocatalytic nanostructures. I will show you. And uh, as uh, um, other type of structures for optical applications. So uh, these uh, three types of um, uh, application, I will address sensing devices, electrical uh, conductors, and I will um, get more into details with optical applications and um, the photocatalytic applications of this type of structures. So the electrospinning technique, uh, it's a very simple technique. It uses chips um, uh, setups, let's say. I, I think the most um, um, cost, uh, um, so the most uh, expensive uh, thing in the electrospinning technique is the know-how, is the person that it does the electrospinning technique, in fact, uh, because uh, it's not uh, getting right from the first try. So um, what happens is we have a syringe in which we put uh, uh, the solution of the materials that we want to electrospin, that we want to transform into a fiber. And we have a pump that it's pumping this uh, solution with a, um, a rate that it's uh, constant. So this syringe uh, has then applied a voltage between the anode that it's um, the needle of the syringe, yes, and the cathode, it's a metallical uh, substrate on which we want to collect our fibers. So uh, it's positively charged with um, from um, units of uh, kilovolts to tens of kilovolts. And uh, we draw in this way, fine fibers, uh, because in the tip of the syringe, uh, a drop is formed. So we have a drop uh, that is formed in the tip. And because of the applying of electric voltage, we have a charging that is covering uh, the drop. And because of the charge and because it's drawn towards the cathode, we have an elongation of this drop, which is called the Taylor cone. The Taylor cone being charged, depending on the electric um, uh, charge of this cone, we can obtain a thinner or thicker type of fibers. So we have uh, the fiber that is formed and we can collect it on a cathode. So we have in this way obtaining high aspect ratio nanofibers, yes, with uh, uh, diameters of tens or um, hundreds of uh, nanometers. And the diameter of these fibers, it in, it's inversional, uh, inver inversely, inversely proportional, sorry, uh, with the applied voltage. So uh, this fiber we can further functionalize. And there are many types of functionalization. We can add into the solution some um, materials like uh, zinc oxide. So we have the zinc oxide inside. And when we go further with the step of calcination, we obtain only zinc oxide fibers. So we can uh, uh, get rid of the template of the polymer fibers that are used in order to draw this type of, uh, of fibers. So uh, we can further use them as such. So if we introduce this type of nanoparticles, we can use them without getting rid of the polymer. So we can use them with the nanoparticles inside of the polymer. Further, uh, there are other types of functionalization chemical or electrochemical deposition, we can cover these fibers with a layer that it can allow, it, it's allowing us to functionalize and use uh, further uh, the fibers. So in this way, we can coat the fibers with zinc oxide, or we can coat the fibers with uh, polyaniline, and we can obtain 
by doing this uh, different type of functionalization different types of applications are um, thought for uh, these nanofibers so um, in this uh, slide i will shortly present the way in which we can uh, cover our fibers with uh, conducting polymer, for instance, to obtain uh, functionalization. So it is, of course, the deposition of the fibers. We can deposit them. This is a, a very nice fact about the electrospinning that it can change the substrates. So we can deposit this type of fibers or um, any substrate that we want. It can be metallic, it can be flexible like uh, paper or like plastic because we can collect those fibers on a frame. If we have a metallic frame, then we can collect those fibers on a frame and we can transfer them on any substrate that we want to use. So we have the fiber, which is further spattered with uh, a metallic layer. Uh, this allows the conduction of this type of fibers. And because they are conducting, we can use them for electrochemical deposition. And in this way, putting them in an electrochemical bath on this frame, yes, we can obtain the covering with, for instance, uh, for instance, uh, polyaniline. And polyaniline coating uh, can give us uh, the functionalities of uh, electroluminescent type of material. So in this way, because we can collect those type of structures on a frame, uh, we obtain thin flexible meshes. They are scalable, they can be uh, done as large as we want. And we can coat common materials like paper, plastic or textile, we can uh, do this type of uh, flexible electronics because we can uh, make contact in, we can contact this type of structures further. So in this way, we obtain thermochromical type of um, uh, nanostructures. You see by applying a voltage, we can make the ink, uh, so to say the sign disappear. Yes, because on the paper, there is a very thin layer of uh, nanofibers that are coated with uh, gold. And because of that, we can make the paper conduct and um, change uh, the color of the sign uh, by doing, uh, by applying a voltage. But but to this is not contacting uh, the paper. We can do this by uh, because they are, uh, the nanofibers are conducting electrically, we can apply a magnetic field. And in this way, without touching the paper, we can make the ink disappear. We can change uh, uh, the temperature, in fact, of the ink, because this is what we are doing. And uh, as I uh, explained you earlier, with polyaniline, we can make electroluminescent fiber because by playing with the voltage, uh, we can make uh, this um, coating of polyaniline uh, change uh, in the luminescent form. There is a, a, an emitting uh, type of electro uh, of polyaniline that it's. Um, uh, luminescent and uh, further we can play with the coatings and we can mimic we can mimic the muscle because by applying a voltage into our on our nanostructures we can make them move and uh, this is a very interesting uh, type of functionalization and can be uh, taken further to producing artificial muscles, artificial muscles that are produced by um, covering this type of fiber. So 
we took interest in robotics and the artificial muscles are produced in the lab <clears throat> by producing microscopic fibers through electrospinning. And we have this intensive field <clears throat> that it's making our uh, jet solution to be pulled. You see, I don't know if you see the fiber. <clears throat> so it's pulled because of the intense electric field towards a frame. This is the frame and a very fine web like structure it's uh, obtained and uh, this special fabric that uh, we are obtaining it's further used <clears throat> because we can cover it with a thin layer of metal yes and it's still transparent and uh, you can further cover it uh, electrochemically by uh, covering with uh, conducting polymers, polyol or polyanilin, yes, in the chemical uh, bath. And at the microscope, you see the fiber, the polymer fiber, that is the pore, and uh, the outer layer, which is the polyanilin. And this structure, uh, if we put an electric pulse, we can make them flex. few application of uh, for uh, the nanofibers that we are working in our group and um, I will be more specific and more into details in the next slides about the optical properties of this type of fibers because if we dope these fibers with various um, type of um, inorganic or organic compounds we can change their functionality. We can play with the functionality. And by uh, doping this type of structures with dyes, um, several polymers may be used. So everything that is um, soluble, uh, it can be used. We can tune the optical properties of these fibers because there are two possibilities in which we can tune the optical properties, we can play with the dimension, you can structure uh, this uh, type of fibers further, or we can uh, play with the composition, put some co-doping into this type of fiber. So um, we can uh, change from thin films of this type of polymer that are doped with dyes, we can, uh, Electrospray them. Electrospraying is a precursor of uh, electrospinning. Is not creating the fibers, but it's creating drops. So those drops are uh, having, of course, as it can be seen, different morphological properties. But further, we can make 
ele uh, we can electrospun this uh, type of polymers that are doped with dyes, and we can obtain this type of beads on a fiber. So we can make beads on a string, which have, of course, different morphological uh, aspect. And if we change further the parameters of the electrospinning, uh, keeping in mind that we have the same type of solution for all these four type of morphological composition, we can further go to uniform nanofibers. And uh, we, what is interesting at, is that by changing the parameters of uh, the electrospinning, we can obtain different types of morphologies for our nanostructures, but also we can obtain different optical response. So for each of these morphologies, we have a different um, emission of this type of structures. Uh, so with the same solution, we can obtain different uh, emission wavelengths for our structures. And of course, uh, different emissions can be obtained by uh, uh, doping with uh, different uh, materials, of course. But at the same um, at the same concentration of the dopant in the solution, we obtain, of course, the mat uh, of fibers. It's uh, thicker here, so more layers of fibers put one of uh, each other. And by changing uh, the organic um, dopant, the dye in the composition of these nanofibers, we can actually change also the morphologies. We can have more uh, beads in the fibers or less beads in the fibers or uh, larger bubbles of uh, this uh, type of um, um, beads on the string, string uh, as it's called this type of morphology. So we can play with the morphological properties, we can play with the optical properties, we can play with the concentration. Uh, and in this way, we can tune the wavelength at which this type of uh, fibers emit. So even if we see something that it's um, white in our opinion, it still has some emitting properties uh, in the nanofibers. So by uh, other way, uh, of tuning this type of optical properties is to codope the polymers. So we can, uh, besides the dyes that are giving us intense um, luminescence, intense emissions, we can uh, put semiconducting, we can also add semiconducting or metallic doping, metallic doping uh, to the solution and uh, we can enhance plasmonically this type of emission. So we played with uh, uh, dyes concentration, with dyes type, and of course, with the addition of um, uh, metallic uh, nanoparticles in different concentration in order to tune uh, the optical properties of this type of structures. And uh, even with um, the morphology of this type of codoping, uh, particles, wires, uh, the emitting properties can be changed. So we have uh, dido polymers. In this case, it's um, only about polymethyl metacrylate yeah? that can be uh, doped with different. Um, dyes. So we have dyes that cover the entire spectrum, yeah, the entire visible spectrum from the red ones that are rhodamines, yes, to the green ones that are coumarins, uh, very close to the blue uh, part of uh, uh, the visible domain. So we have intense luminescence that covers the entire visible spectrum. 
So what can we do with it? So <clears throat> when we think about colors, different colors, we think about mixing them. And uh, when we think about mixing them, we think we uh, think about white light. So white light, it's a very um, a domain that it's researched because yeah, 19% of the worldwide electricity is consumed by this lighting. And since the LED lights uh, took over the incandescent lights, uh, this domain of white light, it's very researched. And this is because the lights, the lightning, the lighting uh, adjusts people's rhythm, people's daily rhythm, uh, because improving lighting can improve people's well-being because we have lighting at home and we have lighting at work, which leads to higher productivity. So uh, in order to understand how we can adjust this white, this lighting, we have to understand how human eyes works and uh, how light works, in fact. So human eyes are trichromates, yeah? We have the receptor cells in uh, the back of the eyes on the retina, yeah? We have the reds, uh, the greens and the blues. Uh, color receptor and uh, the blues are uh, less uh, and the reds are uh, at the highest uh, in the highest number and um, when we think about white light we think about sunlight but the problem with the sunlight is that is never the same uh, because the sunlight is different during the year so it's different in the winter than uh, what we have in the summer. It's um, different during the day because we have a more uh, bluish type of uh, light in the morning. It's very productive. We have this um, um, intense light. And then uh, as we go to the evening and to the sunset, we have this reddish uh, type of light that is more suiting, that is more calming. So light is changing and changing light can change uh, the well-being of uh, humans. So uh, many um, efforts were put by companies to uh, mimic this light, this sunlight, but none of them, uh, when you look at the spectrum, are similar with the sunlight because we have this intense uh, um, emissions in the blue, green, and red zone, but you have to have something that is covering the entire visible domain in order to mimic um, the close, to have something close to the sunlight. So this type of light is, um, um, uh, has has a chromaticity diagram of colors that is not uh, be, um, that doesn't have only two axes but also has one intensity. So it's uh, um, let's say um, perceivable with three types of um, measuring of uh, yeah parameters. We have the wavelength of different types of uh, of colors, and we have the whites that is not actually a point, but as I said, it's more bluish light, is more reddish light, depending on the um, point in the chromacity diagram. And what we had, we had uh, covering uh, the entire domain with um, this type of uh, emissions from the blue to the red by um, electrospinning different dye doped polymers. So polymer actually doped with different dyes that have a uh, different uh, type of emission that are actually covering the entire um, 
visible uh, domain of the spectra. So we have different efficiencies. So it's not so simple to mix them and to produce white light because depends on the light that we want to produce, bluish, reddish, uh, we have to change uh, the composition in our uh, type of uh, nanostructures, the composition of and the concentration of each dye in our nanostructure. So there are two ways in doing this. It's one, it's overlapping different types of colors. And the other one, it's mixing different type of uh, polymers that are doped. And in the end, between the uh, two extreme of the optical domain, we obtain uh, white light emitting nanostructures uh, in our by our uh, electrospinning technique by the electrospinning technique is not ours. So uh, we have different types of light, as I said. We have more bluish, reddish, and uh, the yellow classical ones. And we can make them by this type of mixing colors uh, closer to the uh, em emitting of the black body. As we know, all know, this is the line that uh, is represented here. So we can obtain this type of lighting that um, uh, can be uh, tuned depending on what kind of light we want to obtain, what kind of white light, because it's white, but uh, it's also uh, very tunable between uh, the extremes. Um, another type of uh, application that can be um, sought for this um, nanostructures are the photocatalytic application. And what we have done is um, we produce nanotubes that have photocatalytical properties. Uh, we started from electrospinning uh, the polymer fibers onto a um, frame, a metallic frame, and uh, we obtain uh, web-like architectures uh, by fabricating uh, semiconducting nanotubes um in a three step process so we produce by the electrospinning step 1 the polymer fibers then we uh, using the radio frequency magneton sputtering we covered uh, the polymer fire of, uh, fibers with thin layers of semiconducting materials uh, not only zinc oxide or, or um uh, titanium oxide can be used, but we also played a little bit with uh, alumina and yttria. Uh, but this uh, is the example that I will give. So the electro uh, spin span fibers are covered uniformly across uh, the entire um, surface of uh, this uh, uh, frame. And finally, uh, we obtain only nanotubes by removing the polymer core of this uh, fiber. So uh, the nanotubes are unif uniformly in um, the well thickness, yes, uh, as we can prove by uh, field emission uh, scanning electron microscopy. So the entire uh, fiber is covered with the semiconducting deposits. And uh, by doing um, diffraction, X-ray diffraction, we can um, um, evaluate the crystallinity. And uh, we succeeded in uh, producing single crystalline phase rucite, yeah, of uh, zinc oxide nanotubes. And by reflection, uh, we prove that we have a 3.05 electron volts, which is lower a bit than the um, uh, bulk band gap. I think it's 3.2 uh, for the zinc oxide. And also uh, we produce uh, anatasin, which is the only 
type of uh, phase, crystalline phase in our nanotubes. So we can make them single phase uh, and uh, we can lower a little bit the band gap uh, of uh, those nanotubes when compared with the bulk band gap. And this band gap were calculated from uh, the optical measurement, the refractance of um, uh, our deposits. So further, we um, tested the photocatalytic properties of uh, this type of uh, structures by um, putting uh, the frames, the web light architecture in uh, uh, a um, rhodamine uh, B solution, which is a type of um, product that it's um, usually degraded. There are a few products uh, that are usually degraded in order to evaluate the photocatalytic properties, the degradation efficiency of uh, this type of materials. And we use rhodamine B. And um, we irradiated under a, a solar simulated simulator at one sun. So uh, we saw the uh, degrading um, uh, process uh, both by eyes and in the uh, optical uh, uh, spectra. And we have a very, um, let's say medium efficiency for zinc oxide, but very high efficiency up to 95 or even more, 95% for uh, the titanium oxide cubes. So uh, we actually manage to bleach entirely the solution of the dye uh, that we use in order to prove the photocatalytic properties of our uh, our nanostructure. So the mechanism in this um, slide is only for titanium oxide, um, uh, the scheme to illustrate the process. So we have the solar light that it's uh, illuminating the um, solution in which the nanotubes are. And we have the photoreduction in the conduction band and photooxidation in the valence band. And in this way, we can degrade completely uh, the, the product, the pollutant that it's in our solution. So we will obtain only uh, water and uh, 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 carbon dioxide. And uh, concluding, so we have the electrospinning technique, which uh, makes uh, by which we have the possibility to produce uh, cheap, scalable nanostructure um, architecture, nanostructure networks. Uh, we use green technologies to do so, and uh, it's opening up uh, very um, large fields, many fields for devices and smart materials from biosensor to artificial muscle, to optical um, you know, properties, white uh, light uh, emitting uh, structures, and so on. These dye doped fibers can uh, have uh, optical properties that can be tuned by tuning both the parameter of the electrospinning, which allows us to tune the morphology, and uh, by changing the dyes in the solution and uh, the concentration. We obtain, as I said, um, nanofibers with uh, white light uh, uh, emission. And uh, the photocatalytical properties are um, uh, very um, efficient. Um, with the nanotubes, the semiconducting nanotubes that we produce, we reach a degradation efficiency of 95% in the case of uh, titanium oxide nanotubes. And I want to thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Monica, for your enlightening lecture.
on this uh, electro spinning technique. It was wonderful to see. It was my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have one question in the chat box that I will read it to you. You please answer for that. Uh, one participant, uh, her name is Sankita M. She asked that uh, what method are you adapting for preparation of dye doped polymers? Uh, so for uh, dye doped polymers, we use a uh, different type of uh, materials. We may use different type of materials. Uh, so we use polymethyl metacrylate, but it can be other polymer that it's um, um, involved in the making the in making the solution for electro spinning. So we have a polymer solution, and in this solution we uh, introduce different type of uh, dyes, yeah, sulforodamine, so uh, rhodamine, and uh, we electro spin on a frame that is of copper. And uh, we electrospin uh, in a way that um, allows us to further um, transfer this type of uh, nanostructures on different uh, supports if we want to. But uh, in principle, they are transparent and uh, on the frame, electrospin. I don't know if uh, this is the, uh, the interest that uh, the question what type of materials we will use for the dye doped? Yes. The another question asked by uh, Mahalashmi, Dr. Mahalashmi. Her question is: so What are the greener techniques used to do prepare nanocrystals? Green kind of technique to prepare the nanostructures. Well. Uh, if we used PVP, PVP is a polymer, so uh, it's green because it doesn't take much electricity or other harsh chemicals or um, doesn't use uh, something that uh, we can uh, further, uh, uh, I don't know, disperse into a sink and uh, degrade the water or something. Because if you use uh, polymers that are also commercially used for, uh, I don't know, uh, bagging the um, uh, food, for instance, PVP, it's uh, something that it's used in the um, uh, food industry. And uh, uh, Rhodamine 6G, for instance, it's also, there are some, not this specific one, but there are some dyes that are uh, used in um, uh, coloring the food. Yeah, and they are also emit. They have also this type of um, properties that can be used for uh, um, playing with uh, the emitting properties uh, yeah. in the nanostructure. So it can be green. Not everything that I presented is green. Yeah, there are some but zinc oxide and titanium oxide are used on a large scale in, I don't know, cosmetic products. And so um, PVP, it's a polymer that uh, wraps food, for instance. So uh, it's as green as possible, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, OK, thank you. And another question asked by Denzel Brito. His question is, I am working on fluorescent sensors. Can that be fabricated into device or chip with this method by using, I think, an uh, electro spinning method? Uh, with the electro spinning method, um, so I think it's one of the cheapest uh, methods in producing nanofibers. So, a source it's very uh, low in price, and a pump it's also low in price. So, as I said in the beginning, I think the most expensive ingredient is the know-how. It's the person that it does electro spinning because you want to be reproducible. And uh, after some years of playing with the substance, 
we reach the reproducibility of those type of fibers because you want every time to obtain the same diameter, uh, the same dimension, the same substrates uh, covered, so the same properties when you cover the substrate and so on. So I think okay. it's as cheap as possible. That's fine, that's fine. And uh, another question is uh, asked by Dr. Dinesh Babu. Uh, his question is uh, how to stick the nanofiber on the textile. Uh, textile means so, cotton uh, or silk fiber. Yeah. yeah, so you said, you saw it's um, put on a frame and it's transparent and um, uh, we can put on the piece of clothing, yeah, and only for uh, sticking, apply a little bit of temperature, not much to degrade the, the polymers, but a little bit in order to stick on the textile and they will remain there. So you saw we are clamping the electrodes uh, with, um, so we are clamping the, the textile with electrodes and they are still conducting. So uh, even they look very thin, they are still uh, morphologically quite strong. And he asked that, uh, is there any pre-treatment of substrate needed? Uh, no, is no well, it has to be cleaned. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be dirty, but uh, otherwise you can put this type of fibers on plastic. So we, you can make this uh, type of, uh, I don't know, uh, transparent, uh, PET, for instance, you can put it on um, paper, uh, you can uh, put it on uh, silicone if you want to insert it into something, uh, or on glass if you want to see the transparency of this uh, type of uh, fibers. So uh, they are quite strong and they can be uh, placed on uh, a lot of uh, uh, strap straights. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the another question asked by uh, one of the participants, uh, her name is Birunda. Her question is, uh, what should be the potential difference between anode and cathode? Will it play a role in determining the thickness of the fiber? Yes. Um, if we apply uh, five kilovolts, which is possible. So I think uh, the lowest, um, electric field, uh, it's uh, the lowest voltage will be five kilovolts. And if we apply five kilovolts, we will get probably micronic or uh, beads on string type of fibers. If we are applying as, uh, as much as we increase uh, the voltage, we get thinner fibers, yes, uh, more uniformly in, uh, in diameters. So we can apply low voltage, but we have to um, uh, take in consideration uh, the beads formation. Yes. So the lowest it's five kilovolts, uh, the lowest um, applied voltage uh, at which you can obtain fibers, polymer fibers. Yeah, one of the participants would like to have a discussion with you, Dr. Monica. Uh, yes. Uh, Shukde Pandey, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Uh, yeah, hello, Professor back. Monica. Hello, yeah, hello Professor Monica. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I had no idea about dye-doped nanostructures, and now I'm feeling very interested in, in this field. Uh, and I have a few questions for you. Yes. So, ma'am, the first question is about, uh, like, do the materials need to have, like, a certain permittivity, like, for proper uh, uh, Taylor cone formation? And what about the electrical breakdown when we are like working with kilovolts? So uh, the polymer solution are not conductive. So yes. this is the beauty of electro spinning. If we, we are applying a high enough uh, um, electric field, yes. Mm -hmm we can uh, electrospin anything. So we can electrospin, I don't know, collagen, for instance, we play with uh, this right. type of, uh, of uh, um, materials. So they don't have to be conductive. 
So right. the polymer solution don't have to be conductive. Uh, they can be uh, so other type of materials. They uh, can be electrospun. Uh, mm -hmm. We are talking about melts, but uh, mm -hmm. of course, is taking uh, more extensive devices in um, uh, allowing um, the electric field to go between anode and uh, cathode Definitely. in a um, melting uh, type of environment. So in a solution, we are talking only about the syringe and the syringe needle, and it's mm. easy to, uh, and cheapest. But melting, it's about uh, putting uh, the melt uh, into something that uh, has uh, a spinaret that mm -hmm. can be connected to uh, electric voltage. So we have okay. uh, some different, but uh, what I want to say is they don't have to be conducted. Right, thank you ma'am. The next question is uh, like, can we uh, uh, have an arrangement where we move the needle or we move the frame so that we can have like a, a, a pattern or like, you know, a, a structure uh, uh, of yes. web or like the morphology. And then can this kind of symmetry or ordering affect the behavior, you know, of our nanostructure? Yes, yes. So there are many type of uh, experimental setups for this electro spinning. So we have um, different uh, types of uh, uh, spinarets. So mm -hmm. we have, for instance, multiple spinnerets, so multiple holes from mm -hmm. which we obtain the drops and we obtain multiple uh, uh, cones in multiple fiber in from the same uh, voltage apl application. Um, also, we have uh, the double, uh, the concentrical type of uh, spinnerets in which mm -hmm. we have one solution in the core and another mm -hmm. one in the um, uh, co coaxial, um, right. yes, yeah. And this type of solution can uh, be put uh, in the other end of, uh, yeah, the electrical um, um, uh, circuit right. uh, on uh, some moving type of collectors. So right. Right. we can have a uh, um, rotating type of collector. And in hmm. this uh, uh, way, we can uh, obtain a uh, different configuration for the meshes. We can yes. have a uh, uh, type of uh, uh, not rotating, but a tambour like um, device. And uh -huh. if we uh, rotate uh, fast enough, we obtain a uh -huh. uh, very nice aligned fibers. So we mm. did this. So we have, as we, you imagine, a uh, very a many type of um, electro spinning setup in our laboratory. And uh, uh, there are some that have uh, collectors of uh, um, the size of uh, the piece of paper, A4 letter A4. like piece of mm -hmm. paper. So it's mm -hmm. scalable, as I said, so we can right. obtain aligned type of uh, fibers on a very large scale yes right and very then you yeah. can move this yes mm -hmm. and uh, uh, put uh, uh, the horizontal lines on the same frame so mm. uh, you can play with um, yeah. with the setup and geometrical setup uh, mm. in any way you like so, right, yes. many many possibilities. Yeah, this one. Next question is about this mechanism of the artificial muscles. Like, is it something like piezoelectricity? Like, are the artificial muscles like the material acting like piezoelectrics? And how can we enhance the mechanical strength of these artificial muscles? So uh, you have to reinforce them. So mm -hmm. these artificial muscles are uh, having the core of. Um, polymer solution that is not conductive, but mm -hmm. in order to uh, reinforce them, you have to coat the polymers with a metal. Yes, and ah, this brings uh, a strength. And mm. on the metal, you put the conductive um, polymer. So uh, you have the conductive polymer that it can make be maybe thinner or thicker. And this mm. is the strength, 
but mm -hmm. also because you take a bunch of fibers, it's not only one. You take right. a bunch of fibers. If you align a lot of fibers and you get grab them and put them in a, as um, imagine those uh, type of um, uh, ropes that can uh, hold a whole uh, ship together. So on the spot. So imagine that because it's made of some textile, but when you put them together, uh, the strength increases uh, very much. So you have this type of uh, uh, textile like uh, material, but uh, this textile like materials, it's bringing together a bunch of uh, thin, let's say uh, fibers to make a very stag, uh, uh, strong uh, um, rope, let's say. Okay, so this fast. is how artificial muscle works. <laughs> and you can flex them and uh, change the flexing uh, movement by uh, changing the, electro, the electric field that it's applied. Mm, very fascinating. Then the last question is about RF sputtering. Uh, how can we assure that like, these uh, ZNO layers, for example, or TiO2 layers, or like the coating, is uniform? Like because we are uh, putting it in a cylindrical fashion about these nano wires, but uh, we don't have access, you know, around all the wires. We have access, yeah, you know, maybe but, on one side or from yeah. up and down. So how do we make so, sure that they are like, yeah? Yeah, the RF sputtering that we have. It's mm -hmm. uh, from a target that uh, it's sputtering on um, a substrate that is rotating. So in this mm -hmm. way, you obtain the uniform covering on one side. And uh, our okay. frame, it's holding on uh, mm -hmm. a rotating um, table, let's say. Okay. And okay. when reaching uh, the uh, desired thickness, we mm -hmm. take the frame and we flip it over flip it and over. we put the other uh, I see. Uh, I see. Yeah. The other uh, semisphere. Let's yeah, say. makes sense. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so, so much for your explanation, ma'am. Yeah. And I see like so many possibilities with this. And yeah, it's yes, very interesting. It thank is. you. Thank you again. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Participants, if you have any questions, please type in the chat box or else use the option raise hand to talk with the speaker. And Dr. Monica, I request you please type your email ID in the chat box that will help the audience to reach you. Okay. Yeah. I will stop sharing. So, oh, sorry. So for everyone that is interested, uh, this yeah. is my email. Yes. The yeah, participants uh, are requested to uh, note down the email ID of Dr. Monica in the school. Uh, you can reach her through this email ID. She is very uh, kind of uh, she will reply you very, very soon. Yeah, so, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Monica, on behalf of our college, Technology College of Engineering and Technology, uh, Management, so, Principal Ma'am, Administrative Office, all the faculty members of our college. They, so, I would like to extend uh, my thanks to you. For the thank you very much. On this, uh, yeah, for the wonderful lecture on this uh, electro spinning technique. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we will uh, see you soon in the campus. Okay, After this thank pandemic you. has been over, yeah, sure. Definitely, we will invite you uh, to our campus. Definitely. Thank you so much, Monica. Have thank you. Day. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.